Tokyo Revengers has been one of my favorite anime releases of 2021 thus far. When I first saw the trailer, I thought it was going to be too similar to Erased, Orange, or V-Life to fully draw my attention, but after watching the first few episodes, I quickly realized that this is not the case. Tokyo Revengers is going to leave its own distinct mark on the timeskip anime genre, and what makes it so special is how hard it is to change the future. Spoiler warning for up to episode 17, but each time it seems like Takamichi was able to successfully change the future, people end up dying anyway, and Takamichi's quest goes from just saving Hinata to needing to save Hinata, Akun, Draken, and Mikey. The fact that it is immensely difficult for Takamichi to change the future brings to mind the fate versus free will debate, and one of the main reasons why Tokyo Avengers is so enjoyable is because it really feels like Takamichi is fighting fate as much as he is fighting other characters. The fate versus free will debate itself has been going on for centuries. The fate side typically believes in some form of determinism whereby all events are caused by previous events. As a result, free will does not exist because a person is not capable of acting outside of how they did. There are no other courses of action they could have taken. Essentially, in determinist philosophy, actions are ultimately determined by external forces that do not take into account an individual's will, so even if you feel like you are acting on your own, you are not. Consequently, some determinist philosophers even believe that people cannot be held morally responsible for their actions because all events are predetermined. One of the most famous schools of thought that revolves around determinism is Stoicism. The Stoics were a Greek philosophical group formed by Zeno of Cyprus during the Hellenistic period, which is the period that spans post-Alexander the Great and pre-Roman Empire. Under Stoic philosophy, every action and event is the result of complex cause and effects chains, so the universe has a rational structure. This rational structure is called Logos, and while individuals are unable to control what happens, they are able to control how they respond to events. Essentially, Stoicism is the philosophy that while events are predetermined, you can shape your own individual attitude towards what happens to you. Getting back to Tokyo Revengers, determinism can best be seen with Akun. Even after Takamichi altered the future by saving Draken's life, Akun still tried to kill Takamichi and ended up dying both times, albeit by alternative means. Even though Takamichi altered the past and in some ways altered the future, the end result was the same, which implies that Akun did not have substantial free will in this incident. Akun's chain of causation led him to attempt murder in three separate timelines, twice by pushing Takamichi onto the tracks and once by ramming a truck into his car, which may show that Akun is just fated to be a murderer. Fate is also seen with Hinata. Even though she survived the initial accident after Takamichi saved Draken's life, she ended up dying anyway when Akun drove a truck into Takamichi's car. Even if the details of her death ended up changing, she still couldn't avoid death, which, when viewed from a deterministic lens, showcases how there are no other options for her. It could be that Hinata is just fated to die no matter what Takamichi does. This brings me to my final point on the fate side. Some scholars believe that while free will doesn't exist, it is critical that people believe that free will exists. Without the belief in free will, society could fall apart. One of the most famous arguers of this is Sam Harris in his book Free Will. In this book, Harris argues that even though events are predetermined, it is paramount to maintain morality and blame those who commit crimes, even if they were fated to do so. If you lose all belief in free will, it's hard to motivate yourself to act. Relating this to Tokyo Revengers, Takamichi may not actually be able to prevent Hinata or Akun's death, but he is driven to act because he believes that he can. This motivation keeps him going when things get difficult, and without it, he would have likely crumbled to fear and pressure long ago. The belief in free will is extremely important even if everything is actually deterministic. Moving on to the free will side of the debate, the free will side believes in some form of libertarian free will. To be clear, libertarian free will is not the same thing as political libertarianism. 
Rather, libertarian free will is the belief that nothing is preordained, so individual decisions matter. Libertarians recognize that chain reactions exist, but they argue that people are able to create their own original chain reactions, whereas determinists don't believe that people can create their own chain of causality. Libertarian free will operates off of the principle of alternative possibilities, whereby in order for a person to be free, they have to have alternative, viable courses of action that they could have taken outside of the path they selected. Under libertarian free will, people are able to make multiple decisions, and depending on their chosen action, they can form their own chain of causality. While this sounds like it makes sense, it is actually hard to argue in favor of free will, and it is generally not supported in philosophy and even neuroscience. The main justification for free will is that we feel that our choices are our own. Even if we don't understand how it is possible that we operate on our own, we also shouldn't discredit it entirely because we feel so strongly that we do. Naoto is the best example of free will in Tokyo Revengers. Originally, Naoto and Hinata died, but after Takamichi told Naoto about the accident with the Tokyo Manji gang, Naoto was able to prevent himself from dying and then save Takamichi from being killed on the train tracks. Naoto's entire life changed after interacting with Takamichi in the past, as he became a police officer to take down the Tokyo Manji gang. Since Naoto's life was significantly altered, it is hard to believe that free will and alternative chains of causality don't exist. However, it is possible that Naoto is an exception to fate because he is the one who triggers Takamichi's time travel. As the first person Takamichi influenced, he may be the only one that can truly avoid fate. Draken also showcases free will, but to a lesser degree. Takamichi was able to save Draken from dying in the past, but he is currently in prison on death row for trying to kill Kisaki, so he is still on the road to death. Takamichi was able to completely prevent Kiyomizu from becoming a murderer though, so determinism is still debunked during the Toman vs. Mobius fight. Overall, Tokyo Avengers encapsulates both free will and fate philosophies, which is why watching the show is so enjoyable. The show has yet to take a stance on whether it is truly possible to change the future, which makes it so gripping. The show has shown that it is possible to slightly alter the future, but not alter major events since Akun and Hinata still die and Draken is slated to die. The show probably won't make a stance on whether fate can be completely altered until the end of the series, which is what keeps the suspense of the show going. So that's it for this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you liked the video, and consider supporting me on Coffee. Thank you so much for watching.